The first thing I want to talk about, Ricky, is poor Zingus, man. We got to see his very first action here in, you know, Boston in green. And I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. I really liked what I saw out of poor Zingus. I think not only does he help Jalen and Jason um, get more shots, but he's going to be a legitimate threat in the pick and roll. And I don't think I've ever seen anybody play with Jalen and Jason as good as a threat, you know, in the pick and roll as him. But the one thing I will say, as I think he finished off this game with 17 points, five of seven from the field, two of three from three, only five rebounds. I'm a little bit concerned. I need him to rebound the ball a little bit more. But as he continues to get, you know, acclimated here in Boston, the one big thing about Porzingis is he's going to need to be able to handle the expectations because from here on out, the expectations are going to grow, grow, and grow. Will he be able to handle that? I don't know. But if he plays like that for the entirety of the season, I think the Celtics have a really, really good chance to, you know, go a far away this season. How do you think about or how do you feel about Porzingis' debut? Do you like it? Do you not? Yeah, yeah. I was I was cool with what I saw about with Porzingis. I mean, he he shot efficiently. I think uh, you know, although most of his shots were, you know, twos, I felt like th- that he had a a good vision. He he played defense very very well to the level that uh that we would like to see uh five rebounds uh, i'm not going to take uh too much concern with that just simply because it's preseason ball i'm sure there's a little bit more of an incentive when the games matter to you know rebound not that he's not trying to play hard but let's be honest these these guys are only playing to a certain level uh, and then obviously kick it up a notch once the season starts yeah. uh, all in all we we out rebounded the uh the Sixers not by much by one rebound but we did out rebound them nonetheless so uh there were moments in the game where I'm like man this team really needs somebody to clean up on the glass but in the grand scheme of things I think as the game kind of settled in we were getting ourselves in better positioning I think some of these young guys were putting themselves in the right spot and we were getting some some of those rebounds um from some other other members of the team yep. uh but but I do think that you know, that is going to be a concern throughout the season. Not so much a Chris Haas Porzingis concern, more so maybe like a just a team getting somebody in there, whether that's somebody we already have in place or getting somebody else off the uh, off the free agent market to just kind of fill in that role that's cleaning up glass when we need them to, to, to you know, go ahead and, and grab some boards. So I don't uh, I don't have an issue with the preseason showing of his, uh, you know, of the way he, he did that just simply because I feel like, you know, he worked to only a certain level just to get himself going. And before we get any further into this video, guys, do me a big favor. Hit that like button. Not only does it help out grow the channel so much, uh, but it also gets this video to so many more Celtics fans. We're trying to build an army here, a family aspect to this channel. So make sure you guys hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new. We're going to be dropping a podcast every single weekend. So join the family. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new. And Ricky, what should they do as well? I mean... Fill up the comment section, man. We want to hear your thoughts, your opinions. You know, even if we disagree with you, it's all good. That's all part of the culture here. We all want the same thing. And so make sure you're commenting as well. We want to know your thoughts. Yeah, so comment down below. Who do you think has been the best Celtic looking so far in the first couple of games of preseason? And with that being said, let's get right back into the video. But I felt that his vision was excellent. I felt like he spread the floor like I would like him to spread the floor. And overall... If this is just the sample size, and if we're getting this on a consistent basis, I have no doubt he'll be a great piece here. All in all, Porzingis for me, it's a health concern. I'm not really worried about how well he's going to play the game of basketball. I know he can play the game of basketball. I know he's had some rough stints with some teams. I don't think he's ever been on a team that's been stacked like this. He doesn't even have to be the number three option. He could be the number four if that's the way that they want to highlight this. I think Drew makes a perfect three. And if they want to highlight Porzingis as the number four scoring option on this team, I think it gives him almost like a no pressure situation to kind of say, hey, listen, if you guys want to leave me open because you're doubling Tatum, that's fine. I'll take the three. And I think it's going to put him in a better better position than some of these other teams where he's had to work alongside a number two uh, on pretty much all those teams. And in yep. this in this role, he's he doesn't even have to be the number three. I'm not saying he won't be, uh, but he doesn't technically have to be that guy. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. But I, I'm so excited because he's he's still getting better. Like, you know, he's not the youngest guy in the world, but he's getting better. But the most important thing, 
I need Joe Mazzula to make sure he, um, you know, plays him the right way. And Dallas, they are playing him as just a stretch big. Put him in the post. He's so good in the post. I want to make sure Joe Mazzula gets that right. But overall, first impression of Chris Asperzingis, I am, you know, ecstatic from what I saw. And I know it was a small sample size, but man, if he can do that consistently, I am going to be, I'm going to be so happy with uh, that trade in uh, overall.